Hey guys, this is Mrs. Harbin, and we are finishing up our Solving Systems Unit. Today we're going to look at how to solve systems by elimination. We have looked at substitution and graphing, so let's get started with our third and final technique, elimination. Let's do a quick lesson opener just to make sure you remember some things about combining like terms. Go ahead and simplify each algebraic expression below. 3x minus 5x, or minus 8x, sorry. We can combine those because they are like terms, and when we combine them, we get negative 5x. Negative 4y plus 7x plus 2y. Again, we've got to identify our like terms. In this case, negative 4y plus 2y, and when we combine our like terms, that simplifies to 7x minus 2y. So don't forget about combining like terms. Let's go ahead and simplify these algebra expressions. Remember, we know simplifying means no parentheses, no like terms. So the way we get rid of parentheses is to distribute. In this case, both of these parentheses just have a 1 in front. Uh, so when we distribute a positive 1, we get 5x plus 4y minus 2x plus 7y. From there, we can combine our like terms. We've got some x terms. We've got some y terms. And hopefully, you know that those will simplify and become 3x plus 11y. Down below, to get rid of our parentheses here, we just have a positive 1 we're distributing, so 5x plus 4y. And then here we actually have a negative, or a negative 1, so we've got to distribute that. Negative times a negative is a positive 2x, and negative times a positive 7y is a negative 7y. Once we've gotten rid of those parentheses, let's go ahead and combine our like terms here. We have, again, x terms and y terms. And you should know that when those combine, you get 7x minus 3y. Our objective for today is that you guys will solve systems of linear equations by using the elimination method. This is going to involve some combination. In fact, another name for this method is the linear combination method because you are combining like terms. One other thing we need to talk about before we get started here is also this concept of zero pairs. So first, the definition of the elimination method. By adding or subtracting the equations or multiples of the equations, you can eliminate one of the variables. And in the past, we've called this creating zero pairs. Again, we'll talk about this briefly in a second. Solving the resulting equation after you've eliminated one of the variables produces the value of the remaining variable. So just a reminder, to create a zero pair, we're trying to think of the term that's the opposite, so that when we combine those terms, they equal zero. So what would I need to create a zero pair if I had a positive 3x? Hopefully you said negative 3x. What about a negative 4y? What would create a zero pair? A positive 4y. And last but not least, what if I had two terms and I wanted to zero out both, positive 5x minus 2y? What would I need to create a zero pair? And hopefully you said negative 5x plus 2y. When we are doing the elimination or the linear combination method, we need to make sure that we are creating zero pairs. We want to zero out one of our variables. So let's take a look at two linear equations here. We've got a system of equations 4x minus 2y equals 13 and 8x plus 2y equals 23. Now, when we did substitution, we wrote our two equations side by side here and solve for one at a time, substitute it into the other. When we're doing linear combination or the elimination method, we do actually want to have them stacked like you see here. And we want to see, first of all, if there are any zero pairs. And I see right away that my y terms do, 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 are a zero pair. I've got a negative 2y and a positive 2y. That's perfect. I don't need to do anything. Once I've got my zero pair, all I do is combine. So I've got a positive 4x and an 8x, which gives me 12x. My y terms zero out. They are eliminated. That's why it's called the elimination method. And then I combine a positive 13 and a positive 23, and I've got positive 36. From here, we use the steps that we've already learned previously. Simplify, isolate the variable term, and isolate the variable to solve for our variable that's left, in this case, the x. The x is being multiplied by 12, so I do want to divide both sides by 12. And when I do that, I get x equals 3. Well, once I know my x coordinate, remember, we're always going to have two coordinates. I still need to find my y-coordinate. Well, how can I find my y-coordinate? 
This is where we go right back to substitution, just like at the beginning of the year. Now that we know that x equals 3, I can either plug it into this equation or this equation and solve for y. I can substitute it into either one. So we're going to substitute that back in to the second one here. So 8 parentheses 3 plus 2y equals 23. We get 24 plus 2y equals 23. And again, simplify, isolate the variable term, and isolate the variable. We're going to isolate the variable term by subtracting 24 from both sides. We get 2y equals negative 1, and then y is being multiplied by 2, so we're going to isolate it by dividing by 2. When we do that, we get y equals negative 1 half. So our final answer there, our final solution is 3, negative 1 half. This is the only x and y coordinate that will work for both of these two linear equations. All right, in the elimination method, though, sometimes you don't already have a zero pair. Sometimes you have to do something to make a zero pair. So if you notice that the coefficients of your like terms are the same, maybe both of your x terms are three x's or both of your y terms are four y's, the variable can be eliminated by subtracting one equation from the other. There are two ways that we can record this. So let's take a look at that. So first of all, we have 3x plus 2y equals 8, and 3x plus 5y equals 14. Right away, I notice I do not have a zero pair, but if this was 3x minus 3x, that would be a zero pair. So that's what I'm going to do. Instead of combining that, I'm going to just subtract everything here. So I can write it like that and take 3x minus 3x, that's my zero pair, and 2y minus 5y is negative 3y, and 8 minus 14 is negative 6. At this point, I can go ahead and isolate the variable term, done, and isolate the variable. y is being multiplied by negative 3, so let's isolate it by dividing by negative 3. When I do that, I get that y is equal to 2. All right, I've got one half of my solution here. I need to now go find out what x is equal to. Now that I know that y equals 2, I can substitute that y uh, for y in either one of my equations. So let's go ahead and substitute that y equals 2 into our second equation here. And 3x plus 5, parentheses 2, equals 14. Again, simplify, isolate, and isolate. So we're going to multiply and get 3x plus 10 equals 14. And then we will subtract 10 from those sides to isolate the variable term before we divide by 3 to isolate the variable. Our final solution then is 4 thirds and 2. Again, this is the only x and y value, my x and y coordinate that will work in both of these equations. All right, a second way that we could have done that is to multiply everything by negative 1, which is kind of what you're doing when you subtract the whole thing. So I could have multiplied everything by negative 1 and made that a negative 3x, a negative 5y, and a negative 14, and then combined from there. 3 minus 3x, 2 minus 5y, and 8 minus 14. It's the same thing as subtracting, same thing as distributing that negative. Um, it really is just a matter of how you prefer to write it. I tend to prefer this way so that I don't forget about my negatives for these other terms. Sometimes if I only write the negative out here, I forget that I have to distribute that negative to all the terms. So I do prefer to write it this way. You may prefer to write it the other way. Both are okay. Either way, you're going to get the same answer that y equals 2 and x is going to be 4 thirds. All right, sometimes though, we have not a zero pair, we don't even have the same coefficient. Sometimes we have totally different numbers, not zero pairs, nothing. Uh, and so when that happens, we will have to use the multiplication property of equality on one or both equations in such a way that the coefficients of one of the variables have the same absolute value. Essentially, we're going to multiply so that we can create a zero pair. One's positive, one's negative, we're going to create a zero pair. So let's take a look at this example. 2x plus 3y equals 5, and 4x minus 9y equals negative 10. When I look at my x terms, 2x and 4x are not zero pairs, and 3y and negative 9y are not zero pairs. Uh, they're, they're not even the same coefficients, so I need to create a zero pair. 
This is going to take a little bit of creative thinking, and there's more than one way you could do it. For example, if this were, for example, I, a 4, a negative 4x, I could have a negative 4x and a 4x. So I may want to turn this into a negative 4 with some multiplication. Or maybe I notice that these are already positive and negative. If I turn this into a 9y, I would have 9y negative 9y. Somehow, though, I'm going to have to multiply to create a zero pair. And that multiplication property of equality says that if I multiply uh, one thing in the equation by a number, I have to multiply everything. I've got to keep it equal. So let's go ahead and get rid of our x terms here. I'm going to multiply everything by negative 2 so that I can create this zero pair right here, this negative 4x. And when I do that, negative 2 times 2x is negative 4x. Negative 2 times 3y is negative 6y. And don't forget the last one, got to keep it equal. Negative 2 times 5 is negative 10. My bottom equation is going to stay the same. I was just trying to create a zero pair. Now that I've got a zero pair, I can combine. Negative 4x and 4x zeros out. Negative 6y, negative 9y is negative 15y. And negative 10 and negative 10 is negative 20. From there, I know how to get my variable by itself, so I'm going to divide by negative 15, and I get y equals 4 thirds when all simplified. I've got one half of my solution. The way that I find my x-coordinate is to take this and plug it right back in. I can plug it into the second equation. I can plug it into the first original equation, or I can plug it into this one right here that I multiplied by negative 2. does not matter where I substitute that in. When I substitute in 4 thirds into any of those equations, I will still get the value of x. I'll plug it into this first one here. And everywhere I see a y, I now write 4 thirds. When I simplify that, these will cancel, so I get 2x plus 4 equals 5. Subtract 4 from both sides and then divide by 2. That gives me that x is equal to 1 half. So my final solution is 1 half 4 thirds. All right, let's try another one here. 2x plus 3y equals 6, and 3x minus 2y equals 8. Again, neither one of these is a zero pair, so I need to make one through multiplying. I see here that there's already a positive and a negative, so I would like to get rid of my y's, maybe. Uh, 3 and 2, the only thing they have in common that could create a zero pair is 6. That's our first thing they have in common. So I'm going to try to make that a positive 6y and a negative 6y. To do that, I'm going to multiply the top by 2. That will make my 6y there. And I'm going to multiply the bottom by 3. That will make this a negative 6y. But remember, you do have to multiply by all the terms. And so that looks like this. 4x plus 6y equals 12. And 9x minus 6y equals 24. From there, we just combine our terms. Our 4x and 9x combine to become a 15, or sorry, 13x. Our 6y's are zeroed out. That leaves us with 36 on the other side. Using our simplify, isolate, isolate, we get that x is equal to 36 over 13. Lovely fraction there, we can't reduce it. We've got one half of our solution to find the other half. We just plug it back in. Uh, and let's plug that one into, I don't know, Let's plug it into one of these, but just because we're going to have these weird fractions, let's actually start maybe by rewriting that equation for y. Maybe. Or maybe, okay, let's not do that. Let's eliminate the x's this time. We already eliminated the y's, but so we don't have to deal with our fractions. Let's eliminate our x's. Let's turn both of our x's into 6x here. Now, this example opted to keep them both the same. I might opt to divide or multiply everything by negative 2. So I've got a 6x and a negative 6x. So I'm going to write that negative 6x plus 4y and negative 16 here. When I combine those, I my x's are eliminated. I've got 13y equals 2. And simplifying for y, that equals 2 over 13. So when you're dealing with fractions, instead of substituting, you may just want to go back to the beginning and eliminate again, but eliminate the other variable the second time around, whichever is going to be easiest for you. All right, let's write down some steps here. When solving by a uh, system by elimination or linear combination, multiply both sides of one or both equations so that the coefficients of one of the variables have the same absolute value. And what we say is we're going to create a zero pair. 
do something to create a zero pair for one of your variables. Second, 